Welcome back to In The Works, the show where we update you guys on what's going on here at the shop, our personal projects and other things that we might be doing currently in the workshop. You ready? Mm -hmm. It's that time again. Mm -hmm. Road trip! That's right, we're headed to Ohio to drop off a power hammer and see what other tools we can find. Not only that, Illy and I are both working on our Blade Show 2021 projects. So there'll be some of that in the video. Stick around to the end to catch up on what we're working on. Here we go again, Matt and myself headed on a road trip to Ohio. We are headed west this time. We are going to take my friend, Michael Hoops, one of my 100 pound little giants that I've had in this shop for a while now. Now if you go back and look in the channel to the power hammer video, you'll actually see this particular power hammer that we are taking to Ohio in that video. This hammer is a 100 pound little giant. It is about 80% complete. Mike's gonna take over the reins and finish it up. It is a 1945 yeah. 100 pound little giant that actually came from a car parts manufacturer. And the funny thing about this hammer is it actually came from his neck of the woods, came to me, and now it's going back to his place. We're in West Virginia right now and we are halfway there. So for those of you who don't know, I actually host a podcast called the Axe and Iron Podcast with my friend Roy Scott from Vintage Axe Works. So Roy's down in Kentucky and he's actually going to meet us in Ohio at Michael Hoops' place because it was only a couple hour drive from him. We could all reconnect and get to see each other and check out Mike's awesome shop. Where are you at? away from where? From Michael's house. Hurry up. Wait up. <laughs> Roy, the freaking scotch here. Yeah, I know. He told me he, he, he <laughs> got lost. Little boy got lost. Ha 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 It's a magnet. Hey, aren't you two right supposed up. to hug or something? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Well, do Smack, like, high five, five hug, shake hands, yeah. something, yeah. COVID? He doesn't even have my sticker on this truck. Hi, my name is Michael Hoops, and I'm owner and operator of Cool Township Forge. Now, Mike is very well known in the blacksmith community. He is a fantastic tool maker and just all around great blacksmith. Um, you can find him at Michael Hoops on Instagram. 
And uh, yeah, he had a really great shop with a lot of really cool tools. In particular, he had a very, very stellar collection of miniature to small size uh, European anvils. And when I say miniature to small size, basically anything from five to 50 pounds is considered small. And he had some of the rarest of rare anvils in his collection. How much do you like pay for this one? Uh, Just be honest. One beer. This is what I do all the time. <laughs> What's so special about this one, Chris? Nothing. Know. It's just weird size. Seven inches is weird. They made. They went from six to eight. So if any of you guys follow me on any social media, particularly Instagram, you'll know that a big part of what I do here is leg vice restoration or blacksmith vice restoration. So I noticed Mike had some leg vices in the corner that looked like they had been collecting dust. So. I couldn't just leave them there. We made a deal to make those come back here so that I could restore them and hopefully get them into your shop. All right, we gotta figure out how to get my truck up here. What did that thing lift? Well, I can pick up the car, but I don't know. Well, I got straps around it so you can pick it up. Oh, you do? Yeah. He I'll picked put, it up with yeah, a forklift. Yeah, I put it on there with a forklift, so. Yeah, it weighs 3,200 pounds, though. That's the thing. I don't know if you know. I'll try to throw up and then get back. There you go. I like the way you think. It's <laughs> a big deal. Yeah. He can pick right here if he can get up high. If it's a player or a girl. Sawyer. What do you think? Give her a try, give her a help. I do stuff like that, but not not like that. I mean, the tires were flat. Obviously, that machine. Look at it. Look at it. Well, anyway, we got the hammer unloaded, and now it's Mike's hammer. They were making uh, cam shafts. So if you're interested in seeing updates about this particular hammer, head over to Michael Hoops' Instagram, which is right here, and go give him a follow and check out the progress as he rebuilds and restores this hammer. Yeah. 
<laughs> what do you weigh, Mike? Not really. I think the best thing to do is flip it over on the Got this? This might be the only time. Jesus. <laughs> God, a little mighty mouse. His mama ain't raised no bitch. <laughs> Take it up to the top. Just watch it get on the front anyway. Okay, Mike. All right. I think I can kind of get a strap through there. Oil field anvil from the rare oil fields of Ohio. Guys, guys. The fantastic duo from the Axe and Iron Podcast. Axe and Iron Podcast? What? Right there. What? Right there. Tune in for your chance to win nothing. Aren't you guys the Evaporos people? So out in Western Ohio, there are actually a bunch of oil fields that we were unaware of. Now, with oil fields come what's called oil field anvils or bridge anvils. Now, Michael had these in his scrap pile and I couldn't just leave them there because I thought they were beautiful just the way they were. These two oil field anvils, that one behind me as well as this one are 350 pounds of cast iron is pretty much what they are. Now, these anvils weren't for forging or working hot metal they were basically for straightening any material that you would have out in the field if you had a bent pipe or a piece of steel that just needed to be worked you would use this anvil for that this one has a giant spot that had been worked into it from working cold steel on top of this again these are just cast iron there's no tool steel plates these were basically brought out of the foundry and into the field. Again, very, very cool pieces. The manufacturer names are still cast into them. I just couldn't leave them there. They're great pieces and they're gonna stay here. They're gonna live on each corner of our outdoor shop as uh, like little landmarks and a uh, memory of the trip we went on. <laughs> so now that we're back at the shop, we're gonna get some of these tools cleaned up, repaired, restored because this weekend we're having a blacksmith tool sale and general get together with some of our friends. Not only was this a blacksmithing tool sale, but we also got my Bradley help hammer up and running to demonstrate it to show people how it runs. We still have some minor tweaks here and there to get it fully restored and we still need to pour a permanent concrete pad to mount it to, but the hammer does run and it's really cool. We also had an axe throwing setup where I helped people learn how to throw an axe for the first time and some just came and threw some just for fun. Because axe throwing is always fun, right Roy? For this year's Blade Show projects, I decided to go a little different route. Do something a little different, change it up. Over the years, I've become pretty well known for these flamberge or Chris style blades. The way I grind them is a little unique. So I'm gonna not only do this ADCRV long sword that's gonna have a complex hilt, I'm also gonna do a Damascus dagger that matches sort of in technique, not necessarily in style. But what I have to do now is go ahead and start polishing this blade up and get ready to start on the mounts.
One of the things I'm doing differently on this sword is not only do my radiuses decrease on the perimeter as we go down the blade, but I'm also using a smaller and smaller contact wheel to actually grind the edge in itself. That way I get much more crisp lines. Everything stays really nice and I get a taper in all directions on the blade and it just adds a different level of difficulty. So hey, why not? After I use the larger contact wheel on the top of the blade, the half that's towards the point will all get done on a two inch wheel. Now this does add some complexity to what I'm doing. You'll notice that I stop doing the long passes and I start kind of feathering in sometimes. That's so I don't get any rippling on the surface of my blade. That can happen naturally when you use small contact wheels. The reason Ilya is not here today is because the work that he has on his blade show project is done mostly at his home. He has a ton of engraving to do on the longsword, mosaic longsword, that you saw him make a few vlog videos back. So he's got a lot of progress that he's made, still has a lot to go. He's working on it right now, so let's catch up with what he's doing. That about does it for this episode of In The Works. We're making great progress on our Blade Show projects. We had an awesome road trip. And one more thing I want to tell you about, I was also on a podcast called The Full Blast Podcast with Jeff Fader. If you guys want to check that out, I tell a little bit more of my backstory you probably haven't heard. So check that out on just about any platform where you can get a podcast. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next time. I'm not saying bang a piece of pipe. <laughs> Welcome to the Axe and Iron Podcast! <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode and want to see more like it, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm doesn't really pump these videos out like they deserve. So be sure to help us out and tell us in the comments below what build you'd like to see this team build next. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. That works.